Cobra here. Come on. At your service. Through the hooks. An intriguing combination, I think you'll agree. Yeti hair, British Royal Marines, DPM, vintage now, jacket, and the dress McDonald. Who would have thought they'd go together? Nobody, that's who. Anyway, there is a reason why I'm wearing this jacket. Uh, and this is one of my old actual uh, jackets from my service for Queen and Country. Um, right, I keep looking over here nervously because, well, two reasons. One, because we've got no whiskey left. And uh, you know, a confirmed alcoholic like myself has been reduced to drinking even at the famous grouse glass. Um, Carver? <laughs> What's the world coming to? Carver. Fucking pop, innit? It's just pop. It's kid stuff. Jesus. And yet, yeah, you know, kind of tasty. Zesty. All the things, the complete opposite of whiskey. But, mm. Right, folks, how are you all? Hope you're doing very, very well. Um, yeah, the reason why I'm wearing this is because it's going to go pretty well with what I've got to show you right here. Yes, it's another mask. How many masks, Kiltman? How many masks have you got? Times by five. Add another 20. And there's three on the way. I've got loads. That's how many. Loads of masks. You can't have too many, as far as I'm concerned. Especially this time of year. So folks, let me introduce you to... <laughs> Look at this baby. Look at this. You got a flash of colour there, didn't you? Wait till you see what I got for you this time. You've seen a few pumpkins, so obviously I've been growing other stuff in my allotment out back. Look who... Look who's come to call. Look at the colours. Apologies if you're watching this with a hangover right now because this won't do you any favours. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I've given you a little guided tour right round the back. It's a full deluxe overhead mask. It's from Ghoulish Studios. What do you think it is? Well, I think the title gave it away. It's known as the Venus creature. Venus. Now, when you first think of that, and you first see it, you're going to go, ah, it's an alien space monster. And you'd be wrong, because it's not. It's a creature based upon a Venus flytrap. <laughs> Who came up with that idea? So, here we have a blend of, I would say, um, Swamp Thing, Predator, with this kind of open, wow, you know, extendable maw with these exo-mandibles. Um, you've got a trifid. What else have you got in there? Do you remember in Blade 2? You know, father! The vampires with their mouths going, Wah! Once again, the Sigenor from Scared to Death and the um, Phanoid, I think it's called, all have gobs like that, you know. Basically humanist, humanoid face, and then a big, whoa, whoosh bang wallop of a gob. You know. But folks, at least look at this. At least look at the detail that we have here. Look at the colours in those eyes. Look at the detail on this. Look at these leafy fronds, which kind of enshroud him. And look at these bulging, you know, membranous veins running through. It's beautifully, beautifully painted, beautifully sculpted. So much detail on this. Look at the colours, look at the contrast. The green, the lush greens and the livid pinks and these kind of horrible swampy welts that he's got going on. This kind of swampland acne. But look at these teeth. Look at it all. It's amazing. Love the little, the little nose. Love the inner mouth. And all this sort of glistening, sinuous, sort of, you know, bloody mouth effect. Look at it. And weirdly enough, you've got this, you know, sternum piece with, what's that meant to be? Is that like a, a big, horrible, sap-sucking leech he's got attached to him? Or maybe like Iron Man, that's the source of his strength. Who knows? Who knows? Because he doesn't exist in any sort of story that I know of, or any film. But cast your minds back to uh, 1974. Those of you that can, of course. 
and uh, and there was a great, uh, really wacky, quirky, kind of borderline subversive uh, horror movie, British horror movie called The Mutations or Freak Maker in some territories, which starred the great Donald Pleasance as this fucking weird bloody biologist, a lecturer by day, a student torturer, an experimenter by evening, and he'd be getting all these young students and he'd be combining their DNA with plants and creating fucking bizarre monstrosities like this. He actually does have a large uh, Venus flytrap, which was a man who's become like this, and he feeds rabbits to it and all that. Like, oh man. The great Tom Baker's in there too, as his henchman, who's vastly deformed as well. Like, And he runs a circus of freaks. Now this is where it gets a bit unsavory. A bit like uh, the, um, Michael Winner's film, The Sentinel. Uh, Jack Cardiff, the great British director and cinematographer, Jack Cardiff, who made this movie, this was his last film. He must have been on some heavy medication when he, he accepted the, to do this one, this project. And they've got real life um, deformed people, uh, which, you know, I hate to use the term freaks, but that's what they are termed as, because it's a freak show in a circus. And Tom Baker is a real nasty piece of work to them. He's quite terrifying. He did this before he did Doctor Who, but interestingly enough, the great big floppy hat that he wore as Doctor Who is in this movie. He wears that as well. And um, he's a right nasty piece of work. But yeah, so there's a bit of a genesis for plant-based horror things. So he's got some sort of heritage there. Um, but look at him, look at it. Now, as I say, Ghoulish Studios, and I remember, I think the last Ghoulish Studios one, which was the Blood Vampire, I said that the way it was packed, and I thought, oh, it's gonna be a shambles, this, and it popped out, way, and it's perfect, brilliant. This one has suffered a little bit, but then again, it it is so intricately detailed and sculpted that, it, you know, to get it, there's a lot of contours, a lot of indentations, there's a lot of stuff going on, and this one has a little bit of a tendency to, um, to develop mumps on this side, because this cheek seems to bulge out just somewhat. I've used a hairdryer on it, I've tried to soften it and mould it back in, but to no real avail. It's not, you know, don't worry about it, Christ, you know. Look at it, look at it. Isn't that absolutely amazing? I have took the label off, but it is Google Studios. Um, there's no markings on the inside of it, there's no um, no names. There's, the little flaming skull is, does not appear to be on it, or if it is, I haven't found it. All we've got really, I know some people are interested in this sort of thing, You've got it made in Mexico, made it, which is having a lot of trouble at the moment, Mexico, in the news. My God, the cartels have just completely taken over. I mean, they were already in charge to begin with, weren't they? But, like, the army surrendered to them. <laughs> What's going on? But, yeah, I can't see any other markings. I mean, it's got plenty of grisly, you know, fungal bits adorning it. But here's one eye-catching monster, isn't he? Look at it. So here's your Venus flytrap type thing. And he's got like a double mouth, so you know, what does he eat? What does he eat? Wildlife? He doesn't just sit there and wait for like insects to crawl in there, does he? Because obviously with a humanoid head, he's gonna be a humanoid creature. This is this is the great thing about it, you know, you could you could maybe they just grow, whoop, like that, and they're sealed up like that. Like like sprouts or marrows or pumpkins even. So you have like a, your little fungal patch, which you know, you can get creams for fungal patches. And uh, maybe you just grow them. So they just are little heads just sitting there and anything strays near, like a foot. Whoa, I'm having that. In uh, the great British uh, sci-fi comic, the iconic comic, 2000 AD. Yeah, you all know it, Judge Dredd came from there. Um, they had the, so the intergalactic editor called Tharg of 2008, they used to do this thing called uh, Tharg's Future Shocks. And these were like just little one-off short stories, well, comic, yeah, short stories. Uh, just one-offs. And there was one, I forget what it was called, and I have got it somewhere in the vast labyrinthine corridors and vaults of uh, Kilt Mansion. Uh, and it was like three, three or four spacemen, you know, Earthmen, who crash land on this desert planet. And they rapidly run out of their supplies, so they, you know, they're gonna go mad, they're gonna starve to death. And they happen across this, this sort of, um, what do you call it? Like a, a, a tuba type thing, not the instruments, you know, a, a, 
a fleshy fruit, vegetable type thing. Sprout. Not rhubarb. What the hell is the word? There's, there's definitely there's definitely one of these things. A turnip. That's it. Bloody hell, kilt man. That carb is taking full effect. Yeah, something like a turnip is growing out the ground on a big stalk, and they happen across it, and they, they realise, shit, there's not enough there to go around. We're going to have to fight for it. So they all run off in different directions, and then eventually they have to kill each other off. And what happens is, right at the last moment, when one guy's dying, and the hero, not the hero, the last survivor is running towards it. Wow, I'm going to get me some eats, he says. Like, he's got his knife to cut off this turnip. Oh, I'm going to have trouble with that one. This turnip. And uh, he's about to do it, and he gets, he gets shot. Whoa, the laser ball blow, blows his guts out, and he hits the deck dead. And it's this other guy, and he, his final last breath, he's took him out. And then all of a sudden, in a great little panel, you see the ground begin to move, and this turnip thing begins to shake and wobble. The ground cracks open, and up pops a head. What? Very similar to this. Very similar, with a mouth very similar to it. Like, And one of this is this muscle-bound, you know, Adonis-shaped beast, but obviously alien. And at the top of his head, he's got this thing growing on a stalk. So that's how he catches his prey. He buries himself, lets this thing come out, and attracts prey in to come and eat it, and then he eats them. <laughs> it was great. But he reminds me of that creature as well. So, folks, have another good look at this. Look at those eyes. They're sickly, but they're alive, aren't they? They're vivid. The colours are just so, you know, hypnotic, aren't they? You could sit and look at this for hours and hours. I, indeed, I have. I have no life, no friends, and no money, so I can't go out. Anyway, let's go in. I'm heading into the swamps here. Doubled up. <laughs> Have you run back? Aren't these spectacular? Source of his power. So, I mean, that'd be a good costume in its own right. <laughs> Folks, I'm absolutely loving this mask. Once again, I think ghoulish productions are the best. Zagoni make fabulous masks. Uh, Gilbert Productions just seem to put so much detail and such unusual designs as well. The sculpting is magnificent on this. I mean, I remember um, I saw this reviewed on um, Creepy Cheapies and uh, Dr. Lady, the great Dr. Lady was, you know, reviewing this and he marveled at how they get this out of the mold because of all the teeth. Just how do they break this free from the mold? And all this sort of detail, the jaggedness of these fronds and leaves, it, and the spikes around the eyes as well. I don't, I don't know how they do it either. Uh, that is a magnificent piece of work. To wear it properly, you definitely need to have a costume on because of this sort of floppy sternum chesty piece. And to uh, obviously, you know, tuck it in. Like as you saw there, that a jacket like this, woodland camouflage, you know, jungle fatigues, that sort of look is going to work with this. Um, the ghillie suit, which is full of all the leaves and the, uh, you know, it, 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 you look like a, a walking yeti, a walking shag pile swampland carpet. But any sort of thing like that would go with this. Or if you just wore a big overcoat, a big frock coat, a bit like you see this creature, well, one of the many creatures in that film, The Mutations, as I've described before. He wears like a big overcoat on, and he's got, he's got a big sort of... <laughs> Now, now I do mean a tuba this time, you know, a tuba as an instrument. He's got a mouth that comes out like the end of a tuba, and he's got his big googly eyes as well, like, 
And these are all like Donald Pleasance's bizarre experiments, which have all gone slightly awry. None so pretty as this. None so absolutely jaw-droppingly gorgeous as this. Look at it, look at that. I mean, someone has sat and designed and crafted this. I don't know who, who the guy behind this one is. I, I, I don't think I know any of the names of the sculptors and designers at Ruth Productions. I'd love to know, I'd love to you know, have a bit more information about you guys because you are, you are knocking them out the park with these. Such vivid detail, and the colors, the paint, mate, look at that. Also reminds me a bit of the thing in here, you know, where, um, the dog kennel, where uh, the thing takes over, the, the husky dog, one of which I have in this house somewhere, and I swear to God, I'm sure there's some alien DNA in that bloody thing, in that hound from out, outer space, and um, it takes over all the dogs, and then this flower thing, which is made out of all the dog tongues, comes when McCready and this, you know, Mac wants the what? Mac wants the flamethrower! Damn it, child, torch it! And like child, you know, Keith David finally fires the flamethrower at it and incinerates the whole thing. But it has a mouth like a flower which unfails like that and it's ringed with dog tongues and teeth. Like the petals are teeth. And it's, it's very similar to this again, you know? So there's a lot of things which you could say have maybe influenced the look of this or, you know, they've had in mind when they created it. Obviously, sprouts played a huge part in it as well. <laughs> it's a bloody big sprout. What's it all about? Sprouty! But isn't that great? Now, there are Swamp Thing masks as well that you can get, which are great, and I love the look of Swamp Thing. Now, if he shut his mouth, if he could shut his mouth, it would form that geometric shape of um, Swamp Thing's gob. So, there's a definite precedent there, methinks. But look at him. It is just gorgeous, isn't it? Whether you want to wear that for a costume, which I would recommend, like, you know, a party, your, your haunted house, your whatever, whatever your event is, Halloween looming, you know, Chelsea Flower Show, whatever you want to do, you know? Um, take back the swamps, you know, eco-warriors. Get one of these. You put the fear of God into industrialists who going in there to mine all the minerals out. You start lurking around like this. That's it, they're gonna bug out big time. <laughs> fracking? No fracking way if these motherfuckers, these mother frackers are gonna be sitting there going, no, 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 no. See, who needs fronds when you've got enemies like this? So folks, I want, I want to hear your verdict on this because it is such an unusual sort of critter. It's not your vampire, it's not your werewolf, you know, it's not your Frankenstein's monster. It's none of your conventional sort of creatures. It's a completely, you know, ambitiously designed rogue new element. <laughs> and it is, I tell you what, I can't take my eyes off them. The colours, if it didn't have all like, the teeth and the kind of sickly green eyes, you know, I can imagine putting a spoon into this and go, lovely, very nice. Look at his brow as well. I love furrowed brows. You know, something's going on in there. You're like, they're not happy, clearly, they're not happy. Because you, you don't, you, your brow is not furrowed unless you're like, hmm, you're concerned about something. You've got some kind of consternation going on. Maybe even constipation. But something is not right. And that gives it away. Also, having a big mouth full of fang is a pretty good clue that you're not the happiest of, of gents. But uh, yeah, folks, I am hugely proud of this. This is great. And just holding it around now, I mean, you can see that that slightly bulbous bit there. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, actually, does it? I mean, it, it, maybe it is settling down a little bit. When I come down this morning, that did seem to be out there like that, but I got the hairdryer over it and softened yeah, the latex. Which is a good way, it won't damage it. Don't put it on maximum heat, obviously, and don't put it too close. You just want to make the, the latex a bit more supple so you can manipulate it. And what should happen is it should actually go back into the original shape that it was cast in. So that's, that's what should happen. And I think it has had some effect on it. And obviously, you know, once you pad it out, 
I, I'm going to put a big cushion inside this one just to keep that that face, that lividness. So I love these as well. I love the way you know, because kind of he he obviously when he's totally camouflaged, these would probably his mouth would shut and look like leaves. These would fold over, and he just looks like a great big cabbage, just a cabbage sitting there innocently on the deck until some fool strays too close. There you go. So folks, there you have it. This is the Venus Creature by Ghoulish Productions. Venus as in Venus Flytrap. You can quite clearly see why that is the case. He's not from Venus. He's from down in the bayou. Yeah. He's down from the swamps. Oh yeah. Down by the river bank. <laughs> Don't go too close. So folks, there you go. I hope you liked him. Look at that. It does look really good, doesn't it? You know? <laughs> Those colours are just so mesmerising, aren't they? Maybe that's how he entices his, his, his victims. The people just go like that, the botanists. Are coming. Hmm, I've never seen this combination of colours before. Obviously ignoring the fact that sort of pink, livid colours are danger zone. Especially when it opens to be fucking bright red like that. Anyway guys, there you go. Get yourself some British DPM. No camouflage like it. And uh, get yourself a great big sprout cabbage head thing, you know. And come Halloween, or, you know, maybe it's like a, it's a garden festival or something like that, you know. People are showing off all their, their king-size marrows and cucumbers and what have you. Bedelias, buddlias, all that kind of stuff, like. And then you turn up like this. I grew this! You know, First prize! Now get out! <laughs> okay, folks, take it easy. And I'm gonna see you all <gasps> later! Because I've got some digging to do. I've gotta settle the turnips! <laughs>